Hello folks and welcome to Four Season Backpacking. Please subscribe for the latest outdoor adventure videos. Okay folks, well my sleeping bag seems to remain dry. Um, I find the bit that gets the most damp when camping is the um, the bottom. Bob right down there. Uh, I guess sometimes you touch the top of the tent and um, it seems to be dry. Um, it's actually quite not too damp in here today. And the waterproof thing seems to have done the trick. I'll find out later probably when I take take it out of the uh, bivvy. Um, yeah, and it was really warm. That I mean, seriously, I don't need um, in autumn. I don't need um, a sleep um, a water bottle with this uh, Rab 900 sleeping bag anyway. Um, with this silk liner and the um, ultralight bivvy bag around it. I don't know what it's like on its own, but it is so, so warm. Okay, folks, so I'm about to use my Kosovo spider stove, Kovia spider stove, sorry, with an um, um, adapter that kindly sent me for free to try. Um, I think normally this adapter from them is £5. You can get a £1 one. But this is actually much lighter than the um, uh, one pound one you can get off eBay. Um, this is um, much lighter, so I think it's probably worth paying a little bit extra if you're into lightness. Um, and it enables you to use these cheap one pound gas cans um, rather than the expensive um, hiking cans you get in hiking shops. So the adapter's now been screwed onto the um, Covia spider stove and then I will attach it to this uh, gas can. It's now been attached. Um, simply go like this because it confused me for a while. You put, put it um, down like that and then turn it like that and it, it's attached. So that's ready to go. Okay, so that's a tap. So it's all attached, as I said. And now we've got it going, I've lit it. And as you can see, there's a flame. Um, sometimes it does that, you've got to turn it down a bit. When, it, when it's a new can, yeah, keep an eye on that. Um, and I've got a heat reflector down there, MSR. And the MSR, um, heat reflector there so it's more efficient so just boiling the water for um, a coffee and um, noodles this time Well, folks, there are conkers everywhere, those little furry things. I've got uh, conkers inside them. So that's the path I just come down through the woods, through Hollingcott Estate. I don't know where that was. I was camping up on the hill. That might have been the same estate, I don't know. Looks like they got a deer fence here, so there must be deer in the area. So I just come down from that road, and here we got a sign for. Dover Hay down and Dovery down, Hornock House and the sea, and down there you've got a view of the sea and the church steeple by the looks of it. As you can see, folks, I am actually in Somerset. It does actually say Somerset there. Uh, when I went up the hill, I went up that way and I come back this way. And now I'm about to go along the coast path. I'll charge my stuff up first if the library is open, go to the, the shops, go, then go along the coast path and do a long circuit around there and then probably come back down this way again.
day coming down to the coast path, southwest coast path. I would have walked all of this unless they changed the route a little bit. I think they might have changed the route a little bit, but I actually remember. I can actually remember walking along that salt marsh. They have changed the route a bit, definitely, because the last time I walked it, I actually walked past that barn, along past that barn, it actually walked, went along past the barn. So this route has actually changed. They put it further back. Yeah, the route's changed slightly. Well, the uh, berries are now dying, look. Got very small indeed, all drying up in the berry season. Shame they're lovely those are, I love eating those. Well at some point I'll be back along walking along here when I walk around the uh, coast of Britain as much as I can of course because it is impossible to walk around the coast of Britain but I'll be using this footpath and uh, walking along as much as the coast as possible. Here's, uh, realistic for me and as, as no one's ever walked around and truly walked around the coast of Britain it doesn't matter so I won't be um, it's not a competition but um, yeah so no one's actually ever walked around the coast of Britain they've just walked around as much as the coast as they can possibly do or get as close to the coast it's actually impossible to walk around the coast <laughs> There's a pub over there that's in Porlock Weir. So here's uh, Porlock uh, Weir Harbour. Don't know if that's King Kong up there. Or is it Mighty George? Mighty Joe, sorry. Is it Mighty Joe? Could be Mighty Joe. It's an old anchor there. Okay, so I don't want to go down that way, I want to go up this way. You can actually get some oriental street food there apparently. Zhang's Oriental Food Workshop. Oh, what's this? Well, 10 miles to Lynmouth, that's an okay walk. Uh, coast path. Colburn Church. Now I'm excited about Colburn Church for a few reasons. One, 
being that it's the smallest church still in use in Britain, I think, or England at least. And it's also got a marker, it's got something about when there was um, a massive storm surge or tidal wave in um, in uh, this part of the country, up the um, Severn Estuary. And um, people don't know, still know if it was a storm surge or a tidal wave. But anyway, the whole of the county, Somerset, and other parts of the country got flooded from this uh, surge or tidal wave and I think thousands of people died and a bit of it I think is documented in this church I could be wrong I'll have to correct that on the screen if I'm wrong about that well folks we've got an old toll road here this road goes to Porlock Hill four miles, ten miles to Lynmouth Private toll road, vehicles permitted are at risk operation um, car two pounds right. okay folks well that was um, an old uh, toll toll uh, gate still in use I think looks of it. Um, last time I come past here is when I did the whole coast, well I did the coast path. Um, it was getting dark so I didn't really get any good pictures of it. Got some very darkish pictures but not very good. I think I took it on a, a Canon G9 or compact camera. So that's a pretty good one actually. Well, I don't know if this has happened since I last was here, but it says landslide keep out. It looks like overgrown anyway, so this is the new way. I don't know if it was like this when I was last here, like I said. Do you know what? I love to know what this was for. It looks like it's either part of a pathway or some kind of tram train system. Maybe a tram system for mining up here or something. Or it could be just a part of the old coast path coast path um, way that's now just all dilapidated but look I'd love to know what that is if anyone knows let me know in the comments okay well curiosity has got the bell on me don't know if this is safe walking through here oh my god what is it oh it's a dead end it's, it comes to a dead end That is just really weird. Love to know what this is all about. Weird look folks. There's a fucking hole that goes down there. Very weird. Okay, well this is not the coast path by the way. Hmm. God knows what it was. It's, like, it's not like a shed or anything. It's Answers in the comments, please. Okay, since uh, I've been here before, I think they made the sign a lot better. So before it just said coast path, coast path. I wasn't sure if I was walking, actually walking back on myself because I'm walking back the way I came. Apparently, it says I'm going to the church, so I am going the right way. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Thank you.
Yeah, on the uh, southwest coast path, the most remote bits I find on the, the coast path, I'm sure, if I remember rightly, is this. This is one of the most remote areas in Somerset. Another landslip, folks. Don't know how long it's been like that for. I'm sure there's some other bits as well. I have to look at the map. I can't, I can't remember. It was a long time ago since I've walked the whole path. I did. It, I actually didn't do it in one go. If I was to do it again today, I'd do it in one go. But I did it in parts. I did it in about five parts. But I did the whole thing. Like I said, if I'm going to walk around Britain, I will do that in one go. And you guys can help me out by clicking on my advertisement links. Uh, whatever, you know, Amazon as well. If you click on any of those links on fourseasonbackpacking.co.uk or links in the video description, this this is going to help me do this um, around uh, Britain hike. There's, a, there's no way I can do it unless I get some kind of funding. Check out Corbyn Church. Well, oh, folks, can't see any plaque about any tsunami. Maybe I'm thinking of another another church, but nevertheless, this is the smallest operational church in Britain left. No, I can't see it anywhere. Let's see if I can get internet. Let's see if I can look it up. Obviously, can't go through here because it's cordoned off. It's a lovely old church. I like the fact that they got a camping gas light there. No plugs in here. I was going to see if I could charge my batteries, but it doesn't look like there's any plugs, folks. So this is meant to be 800 years old, apparently. I was just reading. Um, I just had a quick read of their pamphlet. You can buy it for £2.50, by the way, folks. Um, fortunately, I've got no change on me, but um, it's got loads of interesting information in there. So it's worth buying to keep this lovely little church going. This is a bit not part of um, English British heritage. Um. Okay, folks, looks like they're doing some restoration work on the um, the actual spire. It's a lovely little church, and it is. It's the smallest church in um, England, at least, or Britain, as I keep keep saying. Sorry, I keep saying it, but yeah. It's quite a low air little settlement. There's only like two or three houses here. I'm sure there was only one here last time. I don't know here. Maybe there was two. Smallest church in England. Again, I keep saying it, sorry. I don't know if there's anyone who died here in that uh, tsunami was on the boat, but that was a long time ago. I'm sure this church had something to do with it. There's a little uh, robin on there, on the grave. Uh, that cr cross is pretty cool. It's quite old, I think. Interesting, not advertising a private business there, bed and breakfast farm. So here you've got an alternative route if you want to go to the B&B. I don't. Close path, permitted path, I'm going on the proper route down this way. I don't know what this is, but some kind of avacious species, no doubt. Yeah, what a surprise. Oh no! Tick bites and Lyme disease scare folks. And I've been bitten by loads of them, I've never had Lyme disease. It's my coast path. It's definitely a remote filling along this stretch. It's one of the most remote bits. There's definitely no remote bits like this bit and um, there's another bit in North Devon. That's got this uh, remoteness like uh, Cornwall hasn't got. 
Um, there's not really any super remote bits in Cornwall. A very small uh, waterfall here. I'm sure it'd be a lot more stronger than this if there's been some heavy rain. There was only a uh, light rain really in the night and it hasn't rained too much I don't think here. So, yeah. Interesting uh, fungi on the tree there, mushrooms. Um, I remember this stretch now. It's because it's an Exmoor, so it's a quite a long stretch along the cliff face. But the path is very wide, so it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like you're in danger or anything. It's a good wide path so far, from what I, from what I remember before in the past as well. Note though, there are some parts of the coast path that are fairly exposed and um, not that wide and you really don't really want to do it in bad weather in high winds to produce too dangerous to be honest. Place there, you could camp along the path. There's so people have. I can see a little fire pit actually, so I am correct. It doesn't look like it's been used for a while. In fact, I'm going to sit here for a rest for a second because it's starting to go down now. Another landslip. <laughs> How old's that, I wonder? So I've got to go up there instead. So that's that's where the landslip was. That's the alternative path. Not as wide, but I managed it with my big bag. And I'll carry on this way. Another, la another landslide, another slippy staircase to come down there and carry on along this way. Got a waterfall crossing here now. Someone's left a hat there. Well folks, another steep path. <laughs> Starting to rain a bit. Actually the path looks alright there. That has definitely been fashioned into a seat. That's pretty cool. Cheers for that guys. Don't know how old that is or how long it's been there. Looks like there's a big tree along here down. I don't know if this is recent, but there's been a few blocking the path. Like small, smallish trees, quite easy to get past. I don't know, it's been cut, you can see the top branch has been cut, so it's probably been down for a while by the looks of it. That looks like it's been cut some time ago. Looks like we've got another path here. I did see it on the map. Oh, we both got to go that way. So it looks like. Maybe the original way is a landslide. This has been blocked by the looks of it. I've seen so many landslides along here. Now I don't know if that's just um, health and safety gone mad or it is actually dangerous. Sometimes they are actually dangerous, sometimes they're not. But well, it's got, it's got, it doesn't say landslide actually. I think that's just to stop cars going along there. I don't know why a car would come along here though. It's a bit weird, isn't it? I've still got seven miles to Lindworth. Jesus, it's got a lot of hills on this path. Hmm, I might have to camp before my this camping spot I wanted. I mean, I don't want to go back up that way because it's going to farmer's land. That's uh, a long way down. This path is just like up in the cliff constantly from. 10 miles it seems and it's very slippy at the moment because of the leaves and the rain on the rocks but the path's, the path's okay really so far there are some bits that are a bit a little bit awkward with a big bag 
one option I could go up there that looks like a really small steep path going along and um, the coast path is down this way another waterfall along here so you'd be all right for water unless it's a really hot summer like we've just had okay looks like uh, there's a nature trail here Okay, so I have an option to carry on the coast path or go up Country Gate, hoist down the coast path. Now I'm thinking that this sister's fountain is a waterfall, waterfall where I saw. I can remember on the coast path, I camped just before it on the path. This is Colburn Church, back a bit, five miles. Ah, it could have been kilometres. Do you know what? Some idiot. If I'm right, I mean I'll check back on the video, well you'll see it anyway on the video, or pictures. It said Colburn Church, 5. Now I presumed it was miles, but it must have been kilometres, because now I've got to Colburn and it's saying 3.5. Well the last one must have been in kilometres and this must be in uh, miles and it doesn't say, so yeah. Um, it's really nice they've uh, gifted this uh, coast path sign, really cool, but... So yeah, the last sign said 5, which meant 5 kilometres, it didn't say, and this one says 3.5 and, and it's obviously miles, so that's why it's a bit confusing. They've used two different measuring things on the same path, and not saying if it's kilometres or miles on each one. Very confusing. Oh my, oh my god. I remember what this is now. Obviously I've done the coast path before. Is it down this way? Yeah. Done the coast path before. This is the coast path, yeah. Um, and I went past a, um, like a wishing well. Um, Bye. Lucky well or whatever you call them, I've totally forgot what you call them now. Holy well, or something like that. Ah, oh, tired. So I've walked all along the coast through those trees and the sides of the cliff faces on the path. Cliff top path, but not the top, but God knows where. Somewhere in the middle, at the top, I don't know. But uh, more through the trees. Big drops all the way. Most of the way, very steep, drops, path is quite, not too steep, uh, it's steep in places, but not crazily steep, it's, it's hard work with a big backpack, but um, the path is a good standard, I wouldn't say it's, um, it is a national trail, so it's not uh, too serious. But well, you do need a good level of fitness if you're going to be carrying a, a big pack. Aha, I remember these pig gates. If any of you um, 
remember monkey magic. I believe this is where uh, Pigsy retired after filming monkey magic. And he had these uh, fantastic gate posts added. Okay folks. So the rest of that down there is private. I've got to go up this way. That's a really cool windshield seat. When I last went past here, this land slide was fairly new, I think. I think it covered the path. So that's all been cleared up now. <laughs> I don't know what the rope's all about. It certainly won't help in safety. I don't know what the point is in the gate, because animals can clearly just get through there. So what's the point in this? Oh, I'll close it, it says close it. To be honest, if I can find somewhere around here, I'll camp here. I just need to rest from what basically this whole walk, a whole day is walking along pretty much um, very steep or vertical cliff face. So, there's a bench there. <laughs> Not sure if I camped there last time. Probably bloody well did. Okay, folks, so I decided to stay on the coast path. 
and I've got to go around here now. I'm near a road section, possibly. See some kind of road. I'm coming off this path, man, if I have the chance. I've had enough. I've done it already, anyway. choice again of a lighthouse or a coast path. I'm going to stick to the coast path because I've got a feeling up this way there might be somewhere to camp. Hopefully somewhere up here to camp. <laughs> 